Let's get into some commerce and let's add custom trades to villagers. New topics added to the Forge and Fabric courses such as tameable and writable entities, projectiles, throwable projectiles and boats, as well as first steps to biomes and dimensions. Courses linked in the description below. Alright, we found us back in Telegram once more and in this tutorial we're going to be adding a custom trades to villagers including also adding trades to wandering traders so that's going to be very interesting indeed. For this we will need to use events. So events are a vast crazy thing and a topic that we won't go into too much detail on. Let's just say that events basically are certain things that happen at certain times and we can then influence this. So for example, there are events for when a living entity gets damaged or in this case, when a list of trades is getting populated and we can basically enter stuff into it. So for this, in the tutorial mod package, we're going to make a new package called event. And instead of there, we'll make a new Java class called the mod events class. There we go. Now, this is quite important at the top of the class. So above the class, we want to add the at event bus subscriber over here. So there's going to be an at mod dot event bus subscriber. And then inside of parentheses, we want to put in tutorial mod dot mod ID. Then forge will recognize this class as an event class. And we can then add the methods for this. So this is going to be a public static void add custom trades. The name of the method is not as important. It is, however, important that it is both public, static and void. And the parameter passed into it is always the event. You can see this is the villager trades event. It actually already suggests this to us called event over here. And then this is also important. It needs the add subscribe event annotation over here above it. This is the general way that an event is structured, public static void, and the name of the method, it always has an add subscribe event above it, and then whatever event you wanted to basically choose over here as a, as a parameter. Now you can middle mouse button click on this event and it usually has a pretty good summary of what happens and how you can use this. And you can also, if you can see it extends from event, if I middle mouse button click on this and then press control H, you can see that this is going to bring up the entire hierarchy and if i actually expand this you can see these are all of the events that are available in forge there are tons and tons and tons of them it is absolutely crazy so highly recommended to basically check this out to see like different things that are available to you that you can basically use and and change and and go into so highly recommended to take a look at that but let's continue with the trading over here so this is for normal villagers first and then we'll look at the wandering traders after this so first of all you need to of course choose which is the type so for this we're going to make an if statement and then we say event dot get type this is going to as you can see get the villager profession and then we can take a look at what this is what this is by using the equals operator and saying villager profession dot and you can see these are the different professions that are existing in vanilla so let's say for example the farmer right here and then all of this inside of the if statement we're now changing this so the inside of the if statement there's one thing that always going to be the same and that is going to be an int to object map right here of type list of type villager trades dot item listing so this is always how it's going to look like if this is red you can press alt and enter to import this and then the item listing should import as well the code is of course also available to you in the description below you can see this is this is called trades and this is equal to event dot get trades you can see no errors should be present this moment if the correct map and uh, list is chosen over here so then that that should be fine. And now we can use this trades to actually add offers to the particular profession over here. In this case, the farm. So for example, I can say trades.get and you can see I want to put in an integer over here. The integer that I put in is the level that this trader is at. One, one is of course the first level and five would then be the highest level. So in this case, we're just going to choose one over here. So this is going to add an item listing to a farmer that is level one. For the item listing, you start typing in trader and you can see it suggests this item listing to us, which is P trader and P random. You just hit tab to autocomplete, and then you're going to return a new merchant offer right here from the from that Minecraft world item trading over here. Once again, hit tab to autocomplete, and the merchant offer takes in quite a few things. But when you understand what is happening, then it's actually not that difficult. The first one is the item stack. This is the items that you have to offer the trader in order to get this trade. Usually this is going to be emeralds, but it can also be different things. So for example, you have to give it two emeralds to get what? Well, that is the next item stack. And that's going to be, for example, more items dot. So that's for example, strawberries. And we're going to get 12 strawberries out of this. Then we get the max uses. Then we get the XP and then also the price multiplier, something like this. And what we can do here is we can then end this with a semicolon. And there we go. So this would be one trade. 
and this would be for level one. If you want to make a new one, I highly suggest just duplicating this and then changing the thing. So for example, if you want to add a trade to level two, right? And you know what? This is actually going to cost five emeralds. And instead of strawberries here, we're actually going to get, let's say corn, right? Why not? And instead of 12, we're only going to get six. And maybe there's like less max uses and a little bit of more XP. And maybe the price multiplier is a little bit different as well. Highly recommended to always try out different numbers over here, right? Always play around with those numbers. That is the easiest way to learn on how everything is basically interacting with each other. And once again, while we're still in the if statement for the farmer, these are the trades that are added to only the farmer and they only sometimes appear, right? They, own, they don't always appear. So do keep that in mind. And of course, right, if you want to continue with this level three, I mean, at this point, right, it's just changing the number right here, right? If you wanted to add it to level five, then you would put in a five over here. This should be really straightforward and not confusing at all in this case. The rest of you are fine. So, you know, maybe you're like, ah, you know what? I actually don't want, maybe I don't actually want emeralds over here, right? Maybe I'm going to be like, it should cost like eight gold ingots. That's totally fine. You can do that. You can actually do that. You can say corn seeds, for example. Maybe we get two corn seeds for eight gold ingots and we can only use this twice, right? Maybe it's like crazy stuff, crazy multiplier over here. Maybe we want to also get some more experience from that. So there you go. So that those are some examples for the farmer. And you can, of course, continue with this. So let's say I would then say if event type over here is equal to a villager profession. And let's say we're going to get the villager profession librarian, for example, because a lot of people also want to add books over here. A lot of people have asked for this because every time you need the, the listing here again, highly recommended to simply put this in here as well. And then we can proceed. Let's actually copy over one of those as well. And then instead of a strawberry over here, I actually now want a enchanted book, right? So to return an enchanted book, there's actually a really interesting thing that you can do. And that is to, to take the enchanted book item dot. And you can see we can actually create for enchantment. So this is going to immediately get us an item stack for a particular enchantment. This is really useful, right? So that we can basically just say enchanted book item dot create for enchantment. And then we can make a new enchantment instance passing in the enchantment. So this is going to be enchantments dot. And then we can choose which we want, which one we want. So let's say, for example, oh, I want the thorns enchantment at level two, right? And this is going to be an item stack. So this is going to be our item stack. This is the enchanted book over here. There you go. Instead of returning the strawberries, we're going to return the enchanted book. Maybe the max use is only two. And you know, this is definitely going to cost more. Maybe maybe a 32 emeralds. That's going to be fine. And this is also level one in this case, just so it's a little bit easier to get this as well. But that would also give you an example of how you can add an enchanted book as well. But we're not done quite just yet because we also want to see how we can add trades to the wandering trader. And that is happening with another method over here. So public static void again. This is the add custom wandering trades here. And this is going to be the wandering trades event called event again. And of course, let's not forget the add subscribe event annotation over here. Very, very important. And this is going to have two lists. The first one is a list of villager trades dot item listing. This is going to be the generic trades. And this is equal to event dot get generic trades. And then there's another list of villager trades dot item listing. And this is going to be the rare trades. And this is equal to event dot get a rare trades. Awesome. And now it's as easy as before, where we simply add things to either the generic trades or the rare trades. No getting of the level needed because the wandering traders in this case actually don't have levels. They just have generic and rare trades. So for example, we can say generic trades add item listing. Once again, we can start writing in P trader or P random, tap to autocomplete, and then a new merchant offer over here. So for example, we want to give the trader, let's say 12 emeralds, and it's going to give us, let's say a new item stack of mod items dot. What can we get from this? Let's say maybe sapphire boots over here. And of course, we're only going to get one boot out of this. That's okay. And this is also a dot get. There you go. And then this is going to be 10 max uses and maybe two experience and maybe a... 0.2 multiplier, ending it with a semicolon, and there we go. We can then duplicate this, and if we wanted to add something to the rare trades, you just say rare trades over here, and let's say this is going to be a, uh, maybe that's going to be, mm, this may be going to be like 24, and what are we going to get from this one? Let's see, metal detector, yeah, let's get a metal detector over here, and the max users here is actually also a little bit less, but the trader gets way more experience, although in this case, of course, they're wondering trader getting experience. I don't think that that actually does anything, but there you go. And there you have it, and if you want to add more, once again, you just duplicate this and add more trades to it. Now, of course, as you add more trades, each trade individually gets less and less likely to actually show up, so do keep that in mind. 
But overall, if you just add a couple of trades, you should be good to go. But yeah, that's actually everything that we need. Once again, of course, all of the code is available in the description below. So no worries at all. But because that's everything, let's jump into the game and see if it works. All right, found us back in Minecraft. And as you can see, the strawberry here for the farmer, we got the thorns to enchanted book. And we even have the metal detector here for the wandering trader. So that is pretty awesome. And if I were to, for example, trade a few times with the farmer over here and have him like level up over here, there you go. Now we can even get the corn. And you can see here it is for eight gold, the corn seeds, absolutely freaking fantastic. And that is pretty much how easy it is to add a couple of different trades over here to villagers. And that's already it for this tutorial right here. But next time in this video, we'll also make custom villager types. Hope to see you there. So, yeah.